Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to prove the Leibniz formula for pi. Namely, I'll show you guys that pi over 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7 and so on forever. And as you can see, that's an alternating series and you will see all the R numbers in the denominators, okay? And this is usually done by using the series for inverse tangent, but today I'll show you guys how to use the series for logarithm to help us out. And we will also have to use some complex numbers. So it also has some complex analysis being involved, okay? But anyway, let's first recall that ln of 1 plus x, where x is the real number, this right here is equal to the sum when n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power over n, and then times x to the nth power. And you see that this right here is actually converges when x is in between of negative 1 and 1, but x cannot be equal to negative 1. First of all, if you want to see how we derive this, you can check out the video. I will have the link to that video in the description for you guys, okay? But our focus today is to actually use this, and we will come up with a nice identity. In fact, two of them, but you know, you'll see. First of all, uh, as I told you guys, we'll be talking about some complex numbers. So usually, when we're talking about complex numbers, we don't use x, we use z. So let me just change this a little bit. So let me write this down as ln of 1 plus z, okay? And if I change z to x, of course, I will just write the x as z right here, right? So this right here, you can imagine, is of course equal to the sum when n goes from 1 to infinity, and this is negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power over n, and then we will have the z raised to the nth power right here. So, Based on the form, it's pretty much the same thing, right? And now we have to talk about the interval of convergent. Because without the interval of convergent, the series for this doesn't make sense, right? Because for example, on the top one right here, can we legitimately plug in x is equal to 5 and work that out? No, because 5 is outside of the interval of convergence, so it wouldn't make any sense, right? So, let's focus on the interval of convergence for this complex logarithms, okay? Hmm, let's see. If I want to write it down, plugging z into here, we will have a small trouble, okay? Let me just write it down right here for you guys. Suppose I just put down z right here and say, this converges if negative 1 and that's a less than, and then we have the z right here in the middle and a less than or equal to 1, right? And here is some tr trouble. We know that z is a complex number. And when we have a complex number, we cannot use inequality for it, okay? So for example, if you want to say 3 plus 2i, this is a complex number, and you cannot just say this is greater than 1. This doesn't make any sense, okay? Because the inequality, this right here, it only makes sense with real numbers, right? So, what are we going to do with this? It's the following. Instead of talking about the complex number by itself like this, we have to talk about the absolute value of the complex number. So, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to show you, but let me erase this right here. So, here is the deal. I want to come with absolute value. That's the idea, okay? But let's look at this one more time. When I say x is in between of negative 1 and 1, and I don't want to say x is exactly negative 1. I could have put this down as the following. I can say this converges if the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. Okay? If you put down the absolute value with x, and you can put down less than or equal to 1. But the trouble here is that this right here is saying x can be exactly negative 1. But that's not what we want. So I just have to further say, but x cannot be negative 1. Okay, so that's the idea. Well, right here, I will be just plugging z into here. And I will just write this down for you guys. That will converge if the absolute value of z is less than or equal to 1, but z cannot be negative 1. Okay, so what do we mean by the absolute value of z? Let me tell you guys that right here. Suppose you write z as a complex number, which is the standard form a plus bi. And let me just draw a picture for you guys real quick. 
So let's say my complex number is right here. This is a plus bi. Well, as I said again earlier, I cannot just say this is like greater than 1 or less than or equal to 1 because complex number and real number, we cannot make any comparison with the inequality. But the moment if I do the absolute value, this means we're trying to find the distance from the origin to this complex number, okay? And this is exactly you know, the absolute value of a plus bi. And now, because this is the distance, this is just a real number, then you can make a comparison, okay? And some people would like to just put on R, I will, as well, doesn't really matter. But of course, you can also just work this out real quick. This is just R, which is just the square root of A squared plus B squared. Why? Because this distance is A, and this distance is B. And of course, this is the real axis, and this right here is the imaginary axis, okay? And once again, this is how we define the absolute value of Z, right here. Cool, huh? So, distance is a real number. Now, this makes sense, right? A real number is less than or equal to 1. So, let me just show you guys what we mean by this first. Let me show you guys this picture. Absolute value of z is less than or equal to 1. It means that I want to find all the complex numbers that is within distance 1 away from the origin. You are really saying you want a circle, right? Because this circle represents all the points that's within within um, the distance one away from the origin, and anything inside will work. But we are not allowed to have z is equal to exactly negative 1. And once again, when you have z is exactly negative 1, you are saying right here. So we can put an open circle like this. So the conclusion is that on the imaginary plane, you get to pick any complex number within this circle without this point right here. And you can plug it into this right here, and it will make sense because it converges. Okay? Now, what do we do? Well, I just have to think about a nice number to plug in. Nice complex number, technically. How can a complex number be any nicer than just as simple as i? i is the nicest one. Huh? Don't be too conceited. I'm not trying to say I'm saying I'm nice. I'm just saying i is the nicest complex number. So, anyway, right here, I'm just going to say let z equals to i. And notice that if you take the absolute value of i, well, just draw a picture real quick. i is right here, right? 1i. So of course, it's distance just 1 from the origin to i. So this is 1, right? So this fits into this in terms of convergence. So you know this is going to work. Now, Plugging i into here and here, we are going to have on the left-hand side ln of 1 plus i, and then this is equal to the sum when n goes from 1 to infinity, and then we will have this, which is negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power over n, and then the i for the z, and then this is i to the n's power, just like that. And this is going to converge, okay? And of course, I'm just doing a brief version of all the complex analysis. Uh, hopefully, you guys are okay with this because uh, I just want to show you guys the pi over 4 identity. That's really cool. So now, here is another part I have to get into detail. Now on the left-hand side, we have ln of 1 plus i. How can we actually figure that out? Well, well, I will have to do a more brief version of the complex analysis with you guys. So let me just do this again right here, okay? So, once again, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis. 1 is 1, i is technically 1i. So, on the real, you have 1 right here, and on the uh, imaginary, you also have 1 right here. So, this point here is 1 plus 1i, okay? So, how are we going to calculate the ln of a complex number? It's first of all, we have to change this into the uh, polar form. To do so, we will have to first figure out the distance from here to here, okay? Okay, the distance here is just going to be the square root of 1 plus square root of 1, which is 2, and you take the square root of that, namely square root of 2, okay? And 
This, okay, be careful with this. 1 plus i, this has nothing to do with this interval of convergence. Earlier, I plugged in z is equal to i into here. Yes, and I end up with 1 plus i, okay? But earlier, my choice of the complex number was within the interval of convergence, so it was legit. Don't let this square root of 2 bother you with this 1, okay? Anyway, the r, the distance, is square root of 2, and you also have to figure out the angle from here to here. And it's not hard to see. This is 1, this is 1. Of course, this angle will be just nicely pi over 4. Use gradients because we're all dots now, okay? So, when you have 1 plus i, and let me just make a note again right here. When you have a plus bi, this is the complex number in the standard form. You can change this into r times e to the i theta. If you want to see how to uh, derive this or how to do this, you can check out the video. I will have the link to the video in the description for you guys. Anyway, so this right here is 1 plus i. r now is square root of 2. That's the distance, just like that. And then e is just e, right? the famous number e. And i is just the famous number i. And the theta is, of course, this angle in radians, namely pi over 4. So this is what we have. And now you see we squeeze out the pi over 4. And now you might be wondering, how is this going to help us with that? Well, once you have the complex number in the standard form, uh, sorry, in the polar form, you get to plug in this into here. And you get to work things out nicely. I will just do the computation right here. Now, what we're saying is that we will just take the ln on both sides right here and also right here, right? And let me write it down nicer for you guys. Okay, on the left-hand side, of course, this is exactly what we want, namely ln of 1 plus i, which is that over there. And now, this is ln of square root of 2 times e to the i times pi over 4. This is a multiplication in the middle, so of course you can uh, break the ln apart, unfortunately. Yeah, they have to be separated now. It's okay. Anyway, first of all, it's going to be ln of square root of 2, and let me keep the square root of in, in red, square root of 2 like this. And we have to add ln of this guy, and some people would like me to put parentheses, I think I will. ln of this guy, which is e to the i pi over 4, okay? Now, let's check this out. The square, root of the square root is the 1 half power. We get to put the 1 half to the front, so we have the 1 half. Once again, the square root is the 1 half power, and by the ln property, we can bring the 1 half to the front, and then we have the ln2. That's how it is. And then, nicely, ln and e cancel each other out, and then we can just put down the plus i pi over 4. Okay? And... Let me just actually stop right here because, in fact, you have a lot more answers right here. What do I mean by that? Well, because when you have log of this, in fact, at the end right here, you can add any multiple um, of 2 pi. It's, going, it's still going to be legitimate. But uh, let me just do it right here, okay? Um, because this right here, it's, you have multiple values. So seriously, you can just put like a plus 2 pi i or whatever. 2 pi i, and then any constant multiple of that. But let me just leave that here. Hopefully, you guys are okay with this. And if you want to see how to do more of this, you can check out the videos in the description. I'll have links to the videos in the description for you guys. For you guys. So yeah. Anyway, this right here is exactly what will be going to the left-hand side. So let me just put this down. This is equal to 1 half ln of 2, and then plus i times pi over 4. This right here is a complex number in this form. This is the real part. This is the imaginary part, right? And now, I'm going to expand the right-hand side because I haven't done so. Notice that we will have i to the powers, right? And you are going to see some of this is going to be real and some of this is going to be imaginary. And we'll just collect the real parts and also the imaginary parts. And in the end, we mix and match. So anyway, put a 1 into here. Let's just do a few ones. You'll see the pattern. So we will have uh, the first term is just 
1 into here, negative 1 to the zeroth power is 1, over 1 is just 1, and then you have i to the first power, so you have i to the first power, okay? Next, put 2 into here. Negative 1 to the 2 minus 1, which is negative 1 to the first power, is negative, okay? And then you will have the 2 in the denominator, so it's negative 1 half like this, and you will have i to the second power like that, okay? And then the next term is going to be you plug in 3 into here, and this is going to be plus now, and you have 1 over 3, and then it's i to the third power, okay? You guys will see the pattern real quick. And the next one, you plug in 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3, this is going to be negative, 1 over 4 like this, and then i to the fourth power, and so on, right? Okay, now let's focus on the right-hand side. Let's take a look on which of these terms are actually having the i. So, as we know, i is just i, right, to the first power, but i to the third power is negative i, okay? This is negative i, okay? And this i squared is negative 1, of course, and i to the fourth power, this is 1, i to the fifth power is just 1 times i, which is i, i to the sixth power is negative 1, and so on, okay? And now, let's see, this is equal to, which terms have the, let's put on the ones have no i. This has no i, just 1 over 2. Next, this right here is negative 1 over 4. This right here is, once again, negative times negative is positive. <laughs> so it's plus 1 over 6. So these guys don't have the i. And let's see which other guys have the i. Put the add, and then let's have all the i's being factored out. When I factor out the i, we will have the 1 inside first. And then this guy has the i. This is going to be positive times negative, which is negative. And then we have the 1 third. Next, this guy has i. This is positive 1 over 5. Oh, this guy has the i, right? And on the left-hand side, you see that we have 1 half ln 2. And that's plus i times pi over 4. And in fact, as I said, we have, really, we have two really cool series. Uh, but let's put on the one that I want to show you guys in this video first. Namely, look at this. This is the imaginary part on the left-hand side, right? And it has to match with the imaginary part on the right-hand side. In another word, we know that pi over 4, this, this right here has to be equal to that, namely 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 9 and so on forever. Okay? That's really, really cool. And you get a little bonus. This right here has to be the same as that. So, of course, you can also write this down. I'll put this down in blue. This right here is the same as this series. And as you can see, this is the alternating series with all the odd numbers in the denominator. You will get pi over 4. This is an alternating series with all the even numbers, except for 0, of course. And you get one half of ln two, ah, so different, isn't it? In fact, it's just so cool. And of course, some people would like to just multiply both sides by two to make it to be nicer. But I think this is just as cool because you see all the even numbers in the denominators. This is all the odd numbers. But anyway, uh, this is it. Hopefully, you guys all like this. Okay, and um, yeah. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to make my videos for you guys. And your subscription is my motivation to do more videos for you guys. And as always, that's it. Yes.